nice to meet you today. I think we've had a lot of interesting talks. Um, I think the last talk that Vikram gave us was a lot about the macro, macro education picture and systems. I'm going to be talking a bit about more detailed uh, in the school activities that my startup does. Um, a bit about us. Um, so uh, we've been in education for quite a long time. I think we started in 2007. I was working as a consultant with uh, Policy Innovations then, but um, yeah, I'll talk a bit about what we did at that time. We were working a lot in uh, impact evaluation at that time. Uh, lately, we have, uh, I think for the, yeah, two years ago, we started a startup called Exam Check, which was uh, uh, trying to deliver um, more meaningful learning outcomes in schools by engaging with examinations in schools, because that's the, uh, sort of output check that happens there. So I'll talk more about that as well. Um, so um, at Policy Innovations, uh, we used to do a lot of impact evaluations where um, we would take um, programs that we're running, like let's say ICICI Foundation is doing a program, and we would see based on uh, what sort of outcomes they wanted, did they actually achieve them at the end of that program. So um, in this sort of uh, work that we did. We also did one with uh, Gray Matters Capital. Uh, and this was about for, uh, there's a phenomenon that happens, I'm not sure if everyone's aware, it's called affordable pro uh, private schools, where there are these schools which cater to low income parents. Um, these parents are usually, uh, they haven't been through formal education themselves. So in a sense, they're illiterate. And uh, they're, uh, because of this APS, phenomena, they suddenly got a chance to choose between several schools in their uh, current environment for their kids. And they didn't have a metric or a process with which they could decide. There are things they knew, but there was nothing in the st structured environment which would help them decide. So um, the problem which we were trying to tackle is, can we create an information artifact which helps uh, illiterate parents decide what is an appropriate school for me? And that might be on a uh, various parameters. It might be based on their economic uh, sort of uh, outlook. It might be on their aspiration for their kids. It might be on in infrastructure that's available in those schools. So um, stuff like that. So uh, what we came up with uh, at that point was um, a school report card, which I think we talked a bit uh, about earlier today. But this was a different sort. This was a tool which helped them compare um, between uh, schools in their vicinity. And uh, we would actually, um, um, so we did a lot of design research to help come up with our, um, a form that these um, uh, parents could understand, visually compare. So we're all used to um, star reviews and starring artifacts to uh, compare between them. And we um, sort of distributed these report cards in uh, localities. And um, we worked with schools where we would, um, their, them and competing, competing schools around their vicinity are also being evaluated. But, um, so the program went pretty well. Um, it helped schools in those environments differentiate amongst each other. What it also started doing was, um, because of the report card, it set off uh, a healthy competition in that ecosystem. And um, after some time, parents started demanding that, hey, you know, uh, are you listed in this tool? How, how, how do I know whether I should send my child here or not? Now, um, so that's what, um, it was a pretty challenging effort because it's not really got to do with data. It's about turning data into information. And that's actually the bigger challenge. Data usually is noise. And um, making sense out of it, helping people who are going to use that to make a decision is actually a massive challenge. And um, so, uh, I mean, we've been talking a lot about data and how we consume it. Uh, and um, so this is a facet where the ultimate consumer, um, the parent and the child, got to interact with uh, data itself. So um, that's what we did at Policy Innovations. Um, I think around two years back, we, um, so being in education for so long, we were always like seeing issues and gaps and opportunities where you know we could engage and you know make an impact so uh, two years back we realized that um, in order to there's a big impact evaluation that needs to happen that can happen that 
does happen in schools, exams, right? But um, as of around this time, exams don't really do anything. What happens is at the end of the year, um, a kid gets a grade, a number, and he either goes and you know hides his report card, doesn't show it to his parents, or he's like, hmm, I did all right, or he's like, I'm, I'm top 10 and you know, it's fantastic. But that's the end of it. That's usually, it culminates there and then we move on. I think someone today earlier talked about continuity, right? There isn't really any continuity. So what we decided to do was using um, exams as a pivot, we decided to try and give personalized learning outcomes to kids. So um, our startup is um, sort of centered around that. That's not the, the value proposition that we sell to schools. Um, we actually um, sell directly to schools. Uh, the value proposition for them is learning material, support for their teachers, and um, obviously taking away the examination bit from uh, as a headache that they currently engage with. So what we essentially do is uh, we conduct, we create well-crafted examination papers. Um, we help stool, schools uh, to administer those papers because uh, we give them answer sheets which are integrated with the um, question papers and um, uh, so students can fill that in. And we collect that post the exam from the school after the teacher has graded them because we've discovered that teachers want to grade their own sheets. And uh, we process them. Now since we get to create these question papers, we actually codify them. So we know after a kid has been through um, a conceptual paper, I'm just gonna keep moving this around because it tends to die. Yeah, so, uh, so what happens after any exam is we understand the conceptual profile of a kid very well. So um, um, what we start doing after that is uh, for the kid themselves, we give them, um, right now we give them information on what they can do, what they should study, uh, to sort of correct or you know uh, remedy where they are. Uh, the plan going ahead will be delivering content as well, which is tailored specifically to them. Um, uh, additionally, what we do for the teacher is uh, for their class. So we've learned about the kid, right? But since we have all of this data, what we do is we compile it and turn it into a class conceptual profile, where the teacher can understand that hey, my bunch of kids. These are the top three things that I, I need to sort of bring back in into the lesson plan to help this class get better. So um, yeah, so those are sort of incentives. Uh, it, any ecosystem needs to have win-wins and it needs to have a sustainable model uh, to grow. So uh, these are, uh, and teachers are a key piece in that. So they need to be supported. Um, I, in the sort of schools where we sell, and we sell to affordable private schools, um, teachers are a stressed lot. Um, they are usually not really paid very well. Um, schools see them as a floating population. They keep shifting, um, so there's a training issue. There are, so in this ecosystem, they, teachers, they can bring about a lot of change. They need a lot of support. They can accept a program, or they can also um, make it crash and burn. So yeah, they're a key component. So um, what have I talked about? Yeah, so I've talked about deploying tools within the school ecosystem, the examination paper, teacher manuals, um, activity kits, which help the teachers do these remedial things that I talked about right now. Actionable feedback loops, which go to the kids and the parents where, hey, your kid got 15 out of 18 in this chapter, but conceptually, you know, you might want to stress on his trigonometry or um, this part of uh, linear algebra, right? So uh, suddenly the information becomes actionable for the parent. They, they're not just, why did you get 70 out of 100? You know, that's such a difficult conversation to have. Um, it's hard for the kid as well because there's no real remedy. The kid doesn't know what to do either. So yeah, opportunities with in, in individual learners. I've talked a bit about that already. Um, it's about this tailored learning support across terms. Because what happens usually is that um, when you go from term one to term two, there's something that you learned in term one, didn't learn very well, but is gonna impact you in term two. With our solutions, what happens is they get to uh, interact with what they didn't learn well in term one again, before they do that in term two. So it, it's, it's we're, we're seeing impact, we're seeing some change, um, uh, and you know kids are loving it, 
Um, so uh, this is happening across, not just within a subject. These things affect, um, uh, the effect happens actually across subjects. Like if you do some change in maths, we know physics is mostly maths sometimes. So it, it starts to, um, there's a trigger effect that happens. The other thing that um, we've been seeing is that since we collect all of this data and it's um, over time, it's across subjects, interesting things um, keep happening. Like for example, um, there's this kid, uh, and when we were looking at his data, we found that for maths, um, he was pretty good in maths, except when it came to word problems, it was a zero. Like, you know, he would always get a certain, uh, within a certain marks range. I think it was between 70 and 75 or something like that. Um, and when we looked into it, um, it was all word problems that he was messing up on. So we looked into, we had his answer sheet, so we peeked, peeked into them, and we found that this kid wasn't writing, um, so in word problems, maths word problems, you even have to write a bit, right? We saw the English, the characters that he was making, they were wrong, right? An E would be flipped and stuff like that. So we looked into his English, and English was, predictably, it was pretty bad, I think, covering around the tens or something. So this sort of, um, so that's a latent barrier, right? The maths teacher didn't spend or couldn't spend time to catch this. I mean, they should actually have engaged with English before they tried to do math uh, word problems for this kid. So um, these are things that we're um, being able to do because we have this sort of data. And um, now that we have such tons of data, uh, mining it is a, it's a massive challenge. Like we've just seen, uh, I think we were talking about the, uh, the dice, um, dirty data problem that you guys were looking at, right? Data is usually noise. To make sense out of it is like massive effort. Um, but um, just having the data um, is fantastic because we can do things like this. Uh, there are other good things that we've been seeing. Uh, opportunities with aggregated um, big data, right? So um, what happens is, um, like I spoke about, now we can give um, customized lesson plans for a whole class. Um, I think someone spoke about something earlier today where um, there's a lot of um, uh, grouping that happens in schools where we, they start saying, hey, you know, this bunch of kids, these kids are smart. These kids are medium and these are medicore and these need help, right? And they do that in sections. Like when you see section A, B, C, you know what A, B, C has been done to do, right? But uh, actually that happens on the basis of marks. And marks don't tell a whole story. They don't help uh, a school construct a class which they can actually target with. So um, data-driven sort of responsive lesson plans for entire classes, creating a class, you know, suddenly the school has um, more information to do that. The other interesting thing that we've been doing is we've found um, data-driven, I'll just take two more minutes, data-driven product discovery. So when we dug into um, a lot of the data that we were generating, uh, we noticed a pattern with reading and comprehension. Now, um, I think we all know that our education system is geared towards um, rote learning. Uh, we test memory skills. I mean, talked about it earlier today. We don't test other forms of intelligence. There are 40 forms of intelligence. So um, what happened was when we looked through this aggregate, aggregate data, we realized that reading comprehension is a massive um, area which no one has actually served to learn. Um, so because there's a lack of critical thinking um, and structured critical thinking teaching um, in, in schools, um, what's happening now is I think uh, reading comprehension passages are changing. Earlier kids used to just mug up the whole thing. The teacher used to help them mug up the answers to them as well. And so they wouldn't be really applying themselves. So we actually uh, made a new product for um, reading comprehension and we discovered it through mining our data. The interesting thing about us is we're actually an education company. Till now, we don't really have a lot of technological tools. Everything that I've been talking about, most of it is delivered offline in printed books. We're making the transition now uh, to um, slowly. Uh, it's a changing behaviors effort, so it's uh, a minefield, but we're doing that. But essentially, everything that you've heard uh, me talk about till now is happening offline. So yeah, thank you.